Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part 5 of Direwolf20's Mod Spotlight covering Batania. Today, we're going to be looking at a long list of nifty gadgets and tools, cool items that you can make from Batania. Some from lower tier stuff, and some from higher tier stuff. There's a lot of things to look at, so we're going to jump right in. And then, uh, depending on how much time we have left, we might also be looking at some of the baubles that you can get that also make your life a little bit easier. We've looked at a few of the uh, rods that are available already in the spotlight, but there's a couple more I haven't shown you guys. One of them is this nifty guy. Oh yeah. All the damage. Uh, the Rod of the Unstable Reservoir, which definitely requires killing the Gaia Guardian, is a really powerful weapon. It basically homes in and destroys any nearby monsters. Super powerful. Um, doesn't work on friendlies, obviously, or, or you know, uh, cows or anything like that. But any hostile mobs nearby will definitely get zapped by this thing. Pretty awesome. Another nifty one is the Rod of Shaded Mesa. See if you can figure out uh, where the reference is coming from. Yeah, pretty obvious. Uh, the Rod of Shaded Mesa allows you to right click uh, and hold right click to pick up a creature. Uh, and then you can release right click to release them or you can uh, hit left click to send them flying. There are several types of seeds available, boreal seeds, dry pasture seeds, golden pasture seeds, vivid pasture seeds. I won't be showing all of these, but they all have the basic uh, same plan. Uh, you can get pods all from them, you can get mycelium from them, uh, you can get a couple other nifty things. And basically what these guys do is if you right click on a patch of dirt, the pasture seeds will turn it into grass. Nice. And it'll kind of uh, spread pretty quickly from the first place that you placed it. Um, it doesn't spread too far, but it will obviously regular grass spreading mechanics go. So if you're building an area that doesn't have any grass nearby and you're trying to get grass, it's actually not too hard to make those guys. The Horn of the Wild is a super useful device that you get very early on and is very easy to make. And it's very cool because when you hold right click, as you can see, it automatically clears out any tall grass in the immediate area, dropping whatever drops would be expected. Nice. Quick and easy way to clear out large amounts of tall grass. Um, now, in addition to the Horn of the Wild, there are two other horns that are listed in the same entry here. Um, you'll notice that there's one for breaking leaves, and that's called the Horn of the Canopy. And then there's one for breaking snow, and that's called Horn of the Covering. And they work in much the same way. Those looking for some nice offensive weapons, the first one you might want to make is the Living Wood Bow. Pretty easy to get, um, and like most Mana Steel tools, it'll repair itself uh, using mana from your inventory. Nice. And if you don't want to have to carry arrows around, make yourself a Crystal Bow. Requires access, obviously, to uh, the Elfheim portal. The Crystal Bow uh, does not require arrows. It'll generate them using the mana from your inventory, so go ahead and boom. You'll also notice that it uh, fires much quicker than the normal bow. There is a uh, type of cloth called Mana Weave, which is basically made with mana-infused string. Mana Weave can be used to create armor, and that armor has some nice attributes. It's not quite as good as Mana Steel armor, so it doesn't protect you as well. However, it does greatly increase your ability to use magical tools and rods. So basically, it might increase the power or the range of them, um, and it'll also uh, cost less mana to use. So you can see there, if you have a full set, you'll get 35% less mana usage for your tools and rods. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so that's an alternative to the Terra Steel armor or the Mana armor. So Terra Steel, you know, is 20% less. So better armor protection versus less mana usage and better rod usage. Another one to take a look at is Spellbinding Cloth. This is pretty useful. Basically, um, it's a type of cloth that absorbs enchantments, right? So uh, it can be used to take an enchant off an item. So if you were enchanting a nifty sword that you just got and you didn't like the enchants you had, no longer do you have to destroy it or find some other way to disenchant it. You can simply craft the spellbinding cloth, which is pretty easy to make, and um, this guy will remove any enchants that are on the item, giving you a chance to enchant it again. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few items. First off is the assembly halo and this little device, which is called a manufactory halo. It's pretty cool. The assembly halo is basically a handheld crafting table. And you can also store recipes, which we'll see in a second. So first off, when it's in your hand, as you can see here, uh, you can look around and you can look at the crafting table and you can put any items in here and craft just as if it were a crafting table. So let's get some wood planks and craft ourselves a stick. Nice. So we've got a stick. 
super cool. What's uh, nice about that is you can pretty much just access that crafting table wherever, or what you can do is store yourself the recipe. So what we can do is just right click here to set the stick recipe in any one of these slots looking around the sides here. I've just stored the stick recipe in the first slot to the right of the crafting table. Now, um, whenever I have that in my hand and I'm looking at it, I can just right click on the stick and you'll see that it'll turn oak wood planks into four sticks. So watch, there we go, nice. That's pretty cool. So click, click, every time I click, it's crafting sticks for me. Pretty straightforward. Not bad, right? Yep, and then, um, you know, if we wanted to make another recipe here, we could easily do that. So let's make a wooden pickaxe for no reason. Now I can set the wooden pickaxe recipe on this little inventory slot. So you can see, you've got a bunch of different spots where you can store these. Now anytime I wanna make more pickaxes, I can. And uh, I can just keep clicking to make more pickaxes. Pretty cool, right? So it's pretty much a handy crafting table that you can have in your inventory at all times, but for commonly used recipes, you can store them on those sides. Now, another thing you can do is, uh, as you'll see here, or you'll note that you can't uh, auto craft the sticks that are needed, even if the recipe table knows the stick recipe. So keep in mind that it won't like, you know, auto craft sticks in order to make a pickaxe. So that's not a thing it can do. Now, similar to that, we've got the manufacturing halo. The manufacturing halo is basically the same thing, except it'll constantly run. So if we do sticks, for example, right, um, and we program sticks here, okay, um, what this will do is it'll automatically convert all the wooden planks in my inventory into sticks. So see, I've got about no sticks right now. I just delete those. And then um, we set the recipe. Now, this only runs when the halo is not in your hand. So see, as soon as I took it off my hand, it turned all my wooden planks into sticks. Pretty cool. Uh, if I get more wooden planks, as long as the assembly halo is in my hand, it's not crafting. But as long as the assembly halo is not in my hand, it'll automatically convert them all straight over. So pretty nifty stuff. You'll note, basically, you've got the two, right? The, the, the crafting halo is for... Um, you know, on-demand stuff, and the assembly halo is for automated. You can also uh, shift left click to remove your uh, recipes from the halos. Now let's take a look at some combat stuff. So thorn chakrams are a nice ranged offensive weapon. They're pretty cool. When you throw them, they bounce off walls and fly all over the place and do a whole bunch of cool things, and then they'll zip right back to you. Um, pretty neat. You can see it getting thrown around there, bouncing off walls, doing cool things. Sweet. You'll also be able to kill cows with them, or pretty much any monster, right? And eventually they'll bounce their way back. Um, they stack up to six, and sometimes they'll apply a poison effect. Pretty cool. Now, in tandem with this is an upgraded version that set mobs on fire, the Flare Chakram. Sweet. That looks pretty good. I like it. Well, let's take a look at how this thing can be thrown. You can throw up to, I think, six of them at a time, or at least they stack up to six, so they can be thrown all over the place. Really useful inside caves. Another weapon to take a look at is this guy, the Star Caller. Uh, basically, it's an upgraded version of the Terra Blade. When you left click somewhere, it's gonna call down a Star Strike wherever you're looking. Pretty cool. Definitely think that this is uh, reminiscent of Terraria as well. Definitely inspired there. Can be used as a normal sword too, but it's kind of hard to aim the sword and the, the um, Sky Call effect down as well. There's also a Thunder Caller that uh, works similarly called the, uh, the Thunder Caller will call down lightning strikes. And this is the Soul Scribe. Basically what it does is kills Endermen a little bit quicker. Um, it has low durability though and won't repair itself. Next up, we've got the Hand of Ender. Super useful tool because it's basically an Ender Chest in your hand. It gives you access to the vanilla Ender Chest that your player has access to. So just by right-clicking, we can store items inside the Hand of Ender, which you can see there. And uh, when we do so, we can access our Ender Chest, right? You can place your Ender Chest in the world and you'll notice those items are in there. Uh, so the Hand of Ender, pretty useful handheld chest and access to the Ender Chest so you can use it to do all kinds of cool stuff. It should also be noted that the Hand of Ender uh, you can shift right click on enemies, like other players, and access their ender chest as well. Cool. These little balls of moss called vine balls can be thrown at blocks and it'll create a line of vines going up and down. Pretty cool. It'll also go up and down through the air as long as it hits a block above it. So like with these leaves here, and we can climb right up. Pretty spiffy stuff. Um, do note that there's a little bit of an effect of gravity. So if you throw it, it will kind of arc downwards. Um, so watch out for gravity as you're throwing this. You need to arc it up a little bit if you want to make sure to hit high enough. 
Next up, we've got the World Shapers Sextant. Pretty nice device for those of you who, like me, can't really build too well, and you want to go ahead and make circles in your game. So you'll note here that as you hold right click, you can see that it has a one block radius set, and as you move your cursor up and down, it's going to increase the radius. Here we have it at a radius of eight. Now, if I go ahead and release the right mouse click, it'll place a ghost image of cobblestone around to show you where all the cobblestone can be placed if you want to create um, a circle of cobblestone that's eight blocks wide. Neat. You can go up pretty high with this. It looks like you can go up to like 480 blocks, so a crazy large amount. Um, yeah, there we go, 23. That looks pretty good. So if you like a little bit of a builder help for circles, there you go. The World Shapers Astro Blade, though, is pretty cool. You can basically shift right click on a block and it'll work um, to auto place blocks for you. So let's take a look. Um, I can set it to three by three, five by five. If I just mouse over, it'll show you a ghost image of the blocks. So there's a three by three and I could just right click to place it. If I shift right click again, five by five. Shift right click again would be seven by seven, but it's not showing because I don't have 49 cobble in my inventory. I've only got 46. Um, so that's an indication that you don't have enough cobble to do what you need to do. I can place it up and down. If I get myself more cobble here, you'll see that I can do the 7x7 seven seven now, and I can even go up to 9x9 nine nine or 11x11. 11 11. Pretty cool, right? So a neat way to automatically build. And just right-click to place the blocks, and it'll tell you how much um, you have left in terms of cobblestone in your inventory. Sweet. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy, the Black Hole Talisman. Super cool little device. Basically, what you do is shift right click on a block in the world. That's going to set the type of block that can be absorbed by the talisman. Now, shift right click into the air and it'll activate it, absorbing all the matching blocks. All the cobblestone just got sucked into the Black Hole Talisman. Nice, and any further cobblestone I get continues to get sucked into the Black Hole Talisman. Super cool. This will hold pretty much an infinite amount. You can now go over the world and right click to place your cobblestone. Neat. And you'll also see a little pop up there indicating how much you have remaining. So 726, which is basically 11 plus stacks. Super cool. Uh, you can place it in your crafting window there to pull out a stack and you'll notice that it automatically deactivates the black hole talisman, which is pretty important because, uh, you know, if, if you put it back in your inventory while it was active, it would absorb the cobblestone again. So doing that little crafting window operation, pretty neat way to get one stack of cobble out. You can shift click to pull out an entire stack of cobble like I just showed there. And then uh, you can shift right click to activate it again to suck up everything again. Neat. So that pretty much holds an infinite number of one type of block and you can use it to build. Um, you can also shift right click to place a stack into a chest. Cool. And you can shift right click a handful of times to put a handful of these into a chest. This can also be used to feed other blocks that auto place things in the world, like the Rod of Shifting Crust. Now let's take a look at the slime in the bottle. Pretty neat. Just get some slime and put it in a bottle. Easy peasy. Uh, whenever you're in a slime chunk, aka vanilla world gen that can generate slimes inside the chunk, like this chunk right here, uh, you'll see the slime start to bounce around. And you can see the slime bouncing around inside the bottle. That's letting you know that you're currently inside a slime chunk. Cool. This one, the Stone of Temperance, we saw and talked about this a little bit with the Terra Shatterer and the Terra Truncator. Uh, basically, it reduces the effects of the Terra Truncator and Terra Shatterer. Basically, what it means is when you have a Terra Shatterer, let's get the SS rank and activate it. And then we're going to go underground and mine. You know, the top tier rank clears out a huge amount, right? And this will work for all ranks. Um, it clears out a huge amount. If you turn on this guy, you'll see that it reduces it to a 3x3 three three area. Nice. So it basically weakens on purpose the Terra Shatterer so that if you just want to build a 3x3 three three tunnel, it's easy. Cool. Now we've got these nifty guys, the Manatide Bellows. These will speed up the um, transfer of mana from a mana pool into a mana holding object like and uh, like a mana tablet there. So you can see that the mana tablet was getting filled up much quicker with the mana tide bellows being placed on the sides of the mana pool. Super full, super fast. Neat. Another effect of this um, is to place the mana tide bellows right on the side of a furnace. No, not like that. Uh, you want to place it facing the furnace. Uh, and it will speed up the smelting operation of a furnace. So go ahead and place something in there like cobblestone. And you'll see how it's slowly smelting. If you right click, it'll give you a big boost of progress bar, right? So that almost filled the progress bar per right click. So pretty much every right click will automatically fill up the progress bar almost all the way and let you get a good amount of progress.
Now, let's take a look at these little guys. The world seed basically just teleports you back to the world origin. So the zero zero of the world or wherever you would spawn if you create a new one. This guy, the Vitreous Pickaxe, pretty cool. You can use it to break glass. As you guys know who play vanilla Minecraft, when you harvest glass uh, with a pickaxe or any other tool, it breaks. Well, with the Vitreous Pickaxe, it basically does silk touch on glass. So watch, if I place glass in the world, I can pick it up. Cool. It's not too expensive, and it's pretty spiffy. Uh, the extrapolated bucket here is pretty useful. It's basically an infinitely empty bucket. Anytime you pick up liquids, it will void them. Cool. Next up, we've got a monster spawner. If we want to pick it up, you can grab the life aggregator. This thing will, when you right click on it, pick up the monster spawner. Do note though, when you place it back down, it's going to destroy the life aggregator. Bum, bum, bum. Resolute Ivy, super cool stuff. Basically, uh, you can place this on any item and it should basically, when you die, the item will be soul bound to you and be still in your inventory. The downside is when you die, um, the Resolute Ivy is destroyed. So you'll lose that Resolute Ivy text there and the item won't be returned. So every time you want to keep an item through death, you have to craft another set of Resolute Ivy for all the items that you would want to keep through death. Not too shabby though. The next item to take a look at is going to be a bunch of baubles. There are a ton of baubles that go into your bobble slot. Uh, the bobble slot is that little ring icon right up here. And you can see that we've already shown you a couple of them. Uh, we've seen the Pyroclast Pendant that basically protects you from fire and the Globetrotter Sash that lets you run around really quickly. Um, we're going to look through a lot of the other baubles that are available to you. There are a ton, as you can see from my inventory being full. The Band of Mana is the first one. It's basically a mana tablet that you can wear as a ring or as a bauble slot. Pretty cool. So as we flip through here, you'll see that there's two. There's the basic one and then the upgraded one. Several rings have an upgraded version. When you right click with it in your hand or place it in your bobble slot, um, it'll basically store mana as if it were a mana tablet. So if we go over to the uh, mana pool here that fills up the mana storing items from our inventory, we'll see it start to fill up. Now I've got two in my inventory right now. I've got the one that's in my bobble slot and I've got the one on my hot bar. So both of them are being filled up equally. If I get rid of one, there you go. You'll see that greater band of mana starting to fill up. Cool. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and get yourself the band of aura, which is even cooler. It's really nice. So the band of aura is going to fill up a mana tablet for you. It's a passive mana generation, and there's a greater version as well. So you can see that mana tablet slowly but surely filling up. It's a passive mana generation, so don't expect it to be fast but it will slow up mana ta or fill up mana tablets in your hop in your hop bar or baubles that are equipped. Uh, the ring of magnetization, basically a magnet, does what it says on the tin. It sucks items up in the world. When you drop items, and we saw this already, um, it turns off the magnet for a moment, but then shortly thereafter, it'll suck them up, right? So any items that are in the world will automatically get sucked up, but when you drop items in the world, it temporarily disables it, which is really useful for anybody who's ever played on a server and trying to throw items at their friends. Uh, there's also a greater band of uh, magnetization, greater ring of magnetization, just basically a bigger radius. It's pretty cool. Neat. Swimming underwater is a hassle unless you have the ring of Cordata. Nice. Basically gives you night vision when you're underwater and it automatically turns off when you come out. Cool. You can see that happening in the top right and it makes you swim faster. We've also got this ring, which is super cool. Gives you haste. Nice. So you basically get a haste effect that's on all the time. Again, at the cost of mana from your inventory. We've also got this one, probably made for me, the ring of correction. Uh, this guy, when you go ahead and choose the wrong tool, it'll automatically switch to the right one. So you see how I had a pickaxe there and it automatically switched to a shovel. Um, it just swapped them. And when you go to mine something like stone, it's going to switch it back to the pickaxe, and then back to the shovel, and then back to the pickaxe, etc. Whatever the appropriate tool is for the block you're looking at will be switched. The only downside is it only works on tools that accept mana uh, to be repaired. So, long story short, don't expect this to work on iron tools. Only mana accepting items. Cool. Now, let's take a look at this nifty gadget right here. Um... You'll notice that I can jump back and forth as I'm tapping left and right. That's the effect of this ring. It basically makes it so you can dodge. If you're dodging an enemy's attack, there's a couple seconds of cooldown before you can use it again. But it's pretty cool. Ring of Dexterous Motion. 
Next up, the Great Fairy Ring. Remember we had the Elementium armor that would basically create fairies to fight anything that attacks you? Wearing this ring will boost that effect. So we saw the fairies during the um, Batania boss fight, and the boss spawned them, and we spawned them, and back and forth. This will increase the chance of fairies being spawned. Neat. Next up, Plane Strider Sash. This is basically like the sash that makes you run faster, but instead of being a constant effect that's always the same speed, as you run further and further, it's going to gradually speed up to the point where you're running really fast. So let's give it a quick try here. We'll just run in this direction after we equip the bauble, and we'll see that as we're running, we're getting a little bit of a speed boost and a little bit more of a speed boost. Neat. Next one, pretty straightforward, Tectonic Girdle prevents you from getting knocked back. So while you're wearing that, you won't get knocked back uh, from enemy attacks. Next up, the Cirrus Amulet lets you jump twice. Cool. Uh, basically, I'll take off my Angel Ring here, and I can jump once and a second time in midair. Super useful and super fun to play with, uh, especially before you have flight. The next one is this cool thing, the Golden Laurel Crown. Basically prevents you from death once. So I'm going to fly way up into the air. And then I'm going to fall. And this will kill me because I don't have an angel ring. Ah, nope, I'm fine. Golden Oil Crown shatters and saves you from death. Gives you a resistance buff, refills your health, and basically prevents your death once, but destroys the crown. Next up, the Flugel Tiara lets you fly. So I leave my angel ring home, and I've got this nifty little thing. Note that it's not unlimited flight. If you look above the... Um, uh, the pieces of food on my hot bar, you'll see I'm losing those little feathers. That's your flight meter. It lasts about 30 seconds. And when you're on the ground, it'll refill slowly. So you can fly for a bit and then refill. You can hit control to jump forward at a rapid pace. So you can see there's a little cooldown on that once every couple seconds. Nice little speed boost while you're in the air. And then you can also hold shift to slowly descend downwards. Um, so as you can see here, slowly descending by holding shift. Uh, that won't use up your uh, flight meter so much, and you'll actually regen a little bit of flight while you're falling slowly like that. Cool. Nice little flight method. Next up, the Nimbus Amulet. Probably should have covered this a minute ago, but uh, it's basically a triple jump. Cool. Now we've got some cloaks. The Cloak of Invisibility does what it says on the tin. It makes you invisible. Pretty much... Obvious, right? Um, it'll also hold any baubles or hide any baubles that you're currently wearing. Note that when I take my mana tablet out of my hotbar there, it's it's or out of my inventory, it turns off. It requires mana, obviously. Uh, there's also three other cloaks, the cloaks of judgment. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate them all, but basically they do something when an enemy attacks you, and then there's a 10 second cooldown. The cloak of virtue, as you can see, um, will completely block one set of damage. So you'll get hit every 10 seconds. One set of damage is nullified and void. You don't have to worry about it. The next one is the Cloak of Sin. All hostile mobs will take the same amount of damage that was taken by you. And then the Cloak of Balance will balance out the damage you took between you and the attacker. Neat. Next up, we have the Charm of the Diva. This, when you attack an enemy with a weapon, not with your hand, hint, um, it will cause an enemy to attack. So see how I left click? He's still attacking me. Well, if I attack him with a weapon, now he's going after another enemy. So it basically makes a monster your pet, and they'll fight for you. Pretty cool. Now we've got, dun dun dun, oh no, I'm placing TNT, it's gonna explode, what's gonna happen? Ah, I still take damage, but it doesn't destroy any blocks, because I'm wearing something very cool. It's the Benevolent Goddess's Charm. It, as you can see in the book here, goes ahead and tells you that it's going to protect against any blocks being destroyed, even from creepers. Sweet. Next up, the Spectator. This is going to let you find items in chests. So I'm going to place some stone in this chest here, um, and then we'll see that in a few seconds, it takes a moment for it to like index what's in the chests so that it doesn't run all the time. It's a little bit of a lag prevention thing. I'll even put some in here as well. Um, we'll see that now, shortly, a few seconds later, this chest picked up that there's stone in there. So as long as I'm holding stone in my inventory hotbar, it's picking it up. We also have Tainted Blood Pendants. Basically, there's one for every type of of potion effect and you can see those all listed here so we've got you know speed and strength and haste and regen all that good stuff um, when we equip it it uses mana from our hotbar and it will give you that one potion effect pretty cool next up we've got the snowflake pendant basically this freezes water underneath your player 
and let you walk on the ice. And then it'll defrost the water as you get further away. So you'll notice there's these little particle effects happening on the ice at the distance right before it breaks. Cool. And then the ice is turning back into water. Neat way to get around a lake. Next up, the third eye. Basically makes it so that you can see monsters through walls. So let's get those spiders and we're going to place one behind a wall. While you're wearing the third eye, they have that spectral effect. So you can see them behind walls. Pretty useful. With it off, you can't see them. With it on, you can. Nice. Next up, we've got the tiny planet. This is the block version. There's also a bobble version of it. Uh, long story short, it will act as a gravitational suction for any uh, mana bursts that go through. So you can see that the mana burst kind of was drawn to the tiny planet, and now it's kind of circling it like an orbit. Pretty cool. Might be a couple of neat uses for that. And then there's a Bobbles version of it as well. Um, it's used to craft the block version. So if we gob the uh, tiny planet out of here, we can place that on our player, and it's the same kind of effect. It basically causes a mana burst to fly around us. If there's blocks in the way, sometimes it gets, you know, it hits the block and then it'll be destroyed. The Crimson Pendant is the upgraded version of the Fire Pendant we saw earlier. Basically, the Fire Pendant uh, puts fires out, but the Crimson Pendant will completely nullify all fire damage and even let you stand in lava. So if I were to get myself a bucket of lava here, placed it in the world, and jumped in it, whoosh, we can see... I'm not taking any damage. Take the pendant off and I do. Cool. And I think, guys, that about wraps up all the different kinds of baubles and nifty tools that we can take a look at for this episode. So we still have a lot of content left. Like, there's at least two episodes left, in my opinion. Uh, we'll see where it takes us. So next episode, we'll look at some of the automation options and some of the ender-based items that you can get through Batania. And then we'll probably wind up looking at, um, you know, a couple other things the episode after that. For now, Daryl20 signing off. Take it easy.